Hi everyone, it's Lisa here. I'm back again, as promised, to do a little video on decorating your mini journal. I've never done tutorials before, so I just hope that you can bear with me because as you know, I've got pretty rubbish camera equipment. I use my phone. I don't use any video editing at all. So what you see in this video is what you have actually got. There's been nothing cut out. So I'm going to keep a good eye on everything. Um, because I'm on my phone, I'm not sure if I'm going to be in frame uh, or if indeed the video is still shooting. It may decide to stop halfway through. So we're just going to play it by ear. What I'm going to do first is going to show you how I stencil the pages of my journal. Just getting my distressing inks out. So if you just bear with me. We are going to use this stencil here. And I'm going to do all of the tea dyed pages I'm going to use gathered twigs distressing and what i find works best is if you give the page a very light spray first and then place your stencil over and that wets the paper enough for you to kind of dab the stencil over the top just randomly and there it is there so you'll see there it gives it a really nice effect so i'm just going to keep going and do some more of my pages Here you'll see it's very faint. In my last journal, I actually used a different distress ink. So I'm just going to get that. It's the Ground Expresso. So I'm going to try that instead because it is a little bit darker. You'll see I don't bother wiping my sponges or replacing them when I use the browns. I just batter ahead. And this one. Little spray with tea. And so I think you get the idea. You can use any stencil to get this effect and it really is very nice on your finished book once it all dries and the tea stains it a little bit more as well so that's the first tip about stenciling uh, what can I show you next um, how about How I do my doilies. This is the finished product which has just been tea stained and I've gone over it with distressing ink. Here's one here and I think I'm going to add a little bit more tea and distressing ink. And 
that's it there. And then what I do is, this is what it did look like, this one. And I've cut out some die cut circles um, from tea dyed paper. And I'm just going to distress the edges. Gives it a really nice touch. And I do like this gathered twigs colour. So I'm kind of going to go in a little bit further. I did the outline with the ground espresso. And then just literally catch the inner edge and pull back towards the outside of the circle so you can see the difference there hopefully you can see it I've got no idea if you can see it and that's how it looks once it's been distressed so you could try doing the two different colours. I do find that gives you a very nice effect. Uh, something else which might be really nice is going round it with something like this, which is the antique linen. my little sponge these are just uh, sponges that you get to clean your pots and pans and I just cut them up and what I'm going to do is just go in a wee bit further I'm not sure the camera is going to pick it up but you do actually get the colour coming up quite nice in real life so going in a little bit further just with my little sponge here and you can also go around these bits if you like so there we go that's how you distress the circle um, and what I'm going to do I'm wondering do I put it on the front do I put it on the back Usually I put it on the back. I did think it would look rather nice on the front there. But I would usually get it on the back and that would strengthen it a little bit. But I think I quite like that. And then um, if you glued this on the top. Now this is just a piece of burlap which I actually got out the pound store, um, my local pound store and it was quite a good amount for a pound and I've just went over it with one of my thinlet dies and what you have to do is go over it maybe three or four times just to make sure that it has cut right through and you may have to go around the edges a little bit with your scissors but that's um, how I cut that out into shapes and let's find some glue which I bet isn't working no it is working it is a miracle and this is my original high tack glue, which I really like. Don't have a clue if it's acid free or not, but it's for a journal, so it doesn't really matter. And you've got a, a wee bit of give with the high tack glue. I did actually buy some more, and then when I got home, I realised it was fast drying high tack glue so I haven't tried that yet but what I do like with this is you do have a you are able to have a, a wee bit of movement on it 
then what you can do is probably best now to fold it and be very gentle with your bone folder because they they are um, quite fragile that's it folded obviously <laughs> that sounded a bit daft and then you can glue this over the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the centre of this and try it go along it with a bone folder I don't know if it will work just to flatten it down but actually I never even thought you could use your, scissors, uh, your iron well it has worked just trim off the edges and this would go on the top like that. I have no idea if this is going to be strong enough for this. I'll give it a whirl. If not, I would probably use the hot glue gun. But then that makes it a bit bumpy. So I would rather not. And then this you can move that about a wee bit more. Just watch, it will seep through. But this stuff dries clear, so it's not going to be a big problem. Maybe not use quite so much glue on yours. There we go. And then you could maybe put some eyelash trim, um, you know, tied into a little bow or some twine or a button. And what I would do with the inside would be I would run my red line tape along here and here, quite close to the top, but not on the fold line, obviously. And then attach it. To your page. So that could be a side tuck, maybe too big for a top, no, it probably could be a top as well and that's how it would look. But I'm not going to do it just now, I'm going to let that glue dry and see if it looks okay first. Um, actually might be quite nice with some glimmer mist usually I would use I've got a box that I keep for spraying but I can't reach it and um, so I'm going to end up with glimmer mist everywhere oh yeah that's nice this is the walnut gold there we go and what I would recommend with this is once it's all dried I have I stupidly haven't made one up to be able to do this um, to show you but I would go over it with decoupage once the whole thing's dried and the decoupage matte glue will seal it and give it a bit of strength so I will do that later once everything has dried I'm just going to check this camera angle. I think we are probably, I was probably too close there. Um, and here's another one that I've made earlier, which is a smaller doily. And it looks, it's a Stampin' Up one, which is an ivory color. And look at the difference when you spray tea, tea on it and uh, distress it. I've also gone over it with stickles round the edges and in the centre. And then gone over it with some decoupage. So, 
so you could give that a try it really is very easy if you spray it with tea first and then go over it with your distressing ink so the video is quite long now so i'm going to say cheerio and i'll be back with part two shortly